All right, so Pascal's triangle. I was gonna have you try and figure out this pattern, but then I realized in the words I actually explained it, so we'll just go with that. So Pascal's triangle is a pattern of numbers that was discovered in the 13th century by French mathematician Blaise Pascal. Now that's halfway of a lie because it was actually discovered before that. Pascal was just the first one to tweet about it or whatever the 13th century equivalent of that is. He's the one that took credit for it and was like, put it out there. That happens a lot to, with things that are named after people. They weren't always the first to do it. So each number in Pascal's triangle is the sum of the two numbers diagonally above it. All outside numbers are one. So since you see all these ones here, we got a one here and a one here, and a one here and a one here. So one plus one is two. One plus two is three. Two plus one is three. So one plus three is a four right there. Three plus three is six. Three plus one is four. Okay, so go ahead and do that last row. Do row five, see what you come up with. You get one, five, ten, ten, five, one, right? Makes sense. So a couple of things I want you to recognize about this is that there's all ones out there and then what the row numbers are because row numbers are gonna make a difference for us. We start counting with row zero and then this is row one, this is row two, this is row three. So the number after the one basically tells you the row number because you're gonna wanna be able to pick out your row numbers pretty quickly as we do this. All right, so we're gonna look at a couple of things about this, but the first one is binomial expansion. Okay, so here's a binomial, a plus b to the nth power. So if I wanted to expand that, like if I wanted a plus b to the third power, I could do a plus b squared and then whatever I get, multiply that by a plus b. But once this gets to like the ninth power, that's a lot of multiplying and remultiplying, right? So let's look at this pattern here. It says, what do you notice about the coefficients? Okay, so we have a plus b to the zero power, which is one, a plus b to the first, which is a plus b, a plus b squared, which is not a squared plus b squared, it's a squared plus two ab plus b squared. Then we have a plus b to the third, fourth, fifth, and so on. So what is a coefficient? The number in front of the variable, very good. So our coefficients here, basically that is one, and then these coefficients are one, then this is one, two, one, this is one, three, three, one, one, four, six, my plus sign's floating for some reason, four, one, then one, five, ten, ten, five, one. So what do you notice about those coefficients? It's the same as the triangles, exactly. So these match Pascal's triangle. All right. So we're going to watch a little video about Pascal's triangle before we continue on. Just a few minutes. This may look like a neatly arranged stack of numbers, but it's actually a mathematical treasure trove. Indian mathematicians called it the staircase of Mount Meru. In Iran, it's the Kayam Triangle. And in China, it's Yang Wei's Triangle. To much of the Western world, it's known as Pascal's Triangle, after French mathematician Blaise Pascal, which seems a bit unfair since he was clearly late to the party, but he still had a lot to contribute. So what is it about this that has so intrigued mathematicians the world over? In short, it's full of patterns and secrets. First and foremost, there's the pattern that generates it. Start with one and imagine invisible zeros on either side of it. Add them together in pairs and you'll generate the next row. Now do that again and again. Keep going and you'll wind up with something like this. Though really, Pascal's triangle goes on infinitely. Now, each row corresponds to what's called the coefficients of a binomial expansion of the form x plus y raised to the n, where n is the number of the row, and we start counting from zero. So if you make n equal two and expand it, you get x squared plus two xy plus y squared. 
the coefficients, or numbers in front of the variables, are the same as the numbers in that row of Pascal's triangle. You'll see the same thing with n equals 3, which expands to this. So the triangle is a quick and easy way to look up all of these coefficients. But there's much more. For example, add up the numbers in each row, and you'll get successive powers of 2. Or, in a given row, treat each number as part of a decimal expansion. In other words, row 2 is 1 times 1 plus 2 times 10 plus 1 times 100. You get 121, which is 11 squared. And take a look at what happens when you do the same thing to row 6. It adds up to 1,771,561, which is 11 to the 6th, and so on. There are also geometric applications. Look at the diagonals. The first two aren't very interesting. All ones, and then the positive integers, also known as natural numbers. But the numbers in the next diagonal are called the triangular numbers, because if you take that many dots, you can stack them into equilateral triangles. The next diagonal has the tetrahedral numbers, because similarly, you can stack that many spheres into tetrahedra. Or how about this? Shade in all of the odd numbers. It doesn't look like much when the triangle's small, but if you add thousands of rows, you get a fractal known as Sierpinski's triangle. This triangle isn't just a mathematical work of art. It's also quite useful, especially when it comes to probability and calculations in the domain of combinatorics. Say you want to have five children and would like to know the probability of having your dream family of three girls and two boys. In the binomial expansion, that corresponds to girl plus boy to the fifth power. So we look at the row five, where the first number corresponds to five girls and the last corresponds to five boys. The third number is what we're looking for, 10 out of the sum of all the possibilities in the row. So 10 over 32, or 31.25%. Or if you're randomly picking a five-player basketball team out of a group of 12 friends, how many possible groups of five are there? In combinatoric terms, this problem would be phrased as 12 choose five, and could be calculated with this formula. Or you could just look at the sixth element of row 12 on the triangle and get your answer. The patterns in Pascal's triangle are a testament to the elegantly interwoven fabric of mathematics. And it's still revealing fresh secrets to this day. For example, mathematicians recently discovered a way to expand it to these kinds of polynomials. What might we find next? Well, that's up to you. All right, did y'all learn anything? Have you seen Pascal's triangle before? Maybe, but maybe didn't know all that stuff, so it's kind of cool. There's a lot of Unfortunately, it's not always what we focus on. Uh, you, gotta have, you have to know some of the lower math to get to the cool stuff. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about how we're going to use this binomial expansion. So if I have a plus b to the nth power, then the total number of terms, so once you expand it, you want to make sure that you have as many as you're supposed to, that's always n plus 1. The first coefficient is always 1, and the last coefficient is always 1, because each row starts and ends with a 1. The, the exponent of a, or whatever your first term in the binomial is, uh, the exponent of a decreases, oh, I can't spell, decreases from left to right, and the exponent of b, or whatever that second term is, increases from left to right. And then the sum of the exponents in each term is always n. So it's going to make writing this stuff out super easy. Okay, we all good so far? All right, so let's actually expand some of these using this triangle. So if I want to use this triangle, let's go ahead and we're going to do the first seven rows over here. So I have one, and then one, 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 two, one, one, three, three, one. So go ahead and do it without me saying it all the way to row seven.
and because of room, it may all look like the numbers are all smushed together, but as long as you can, you know where they separate so you can use the numbers, you'll be fine. All right, so when I want to do one of these expansions, this, the exponent here, this is my n. n equals 6. So that means I need row 6 of the triangle, which is 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, 1. And those are my coefficients. Okay? So when I want to actually expand this, I start with my first coefficient, which is 1 times the first term, a to the nth power, whatever that power is, 6, times b to the 0 power. Because those two numbers, the 6 and the 0, they have to add to give me 6 every single time. When I go to the next term, my next coefficient is 6, then a, this exponent goes down by 1, to the fifth, b to the first plus my next coefficient is 15, that'll be a to the fourth b squared, and then 20 is my next one, and that'll be a to the third b to the third. Then my next coefficient is 15, that'll be a squared b to the fourth, and then 6 times a to the first, b to the fifth, plus 1 times a to the zero, b to the sixth. Okay. Any questions about where anything came from? We're all good in substituting it in? Then we just need to clean it up a little bit. Like we're not going to actually leave 1 as a coefficient and b to the zero power is 1. The first term is really just a to the sixth. Plus, then this will be 6a to the fifth times b plus this will be 15a to the fourth b squared and then 20a cubed b cubed then 15a squared b to the fourth then 6ab to the fifth plus b to the sixth and there is my binomial expansion, which is way easier than actually multiplying it all out. Okay. Any questions at all? Everybody good with where everything came from? So since both of the terms in that binomial were just variables, I can still in here see the coefficients matching the triangle. But when you throw numbers in that, it's not going to be as obvious when we're done. So let's look at number 2. So I have x plus 2 to the 7th. So that means n equals 7. And I need row 7. So row 7 is 1, 7, 21, 35, 35, 21, 7, and 1. All right. So, my first coefficient is 1. I multiply that by the first term, which is x to the 7th power, times the second term, which is 2 to the 0 power. Plus, take my next coefficient, which is 7, times x to the 6th, times 2 to the 1st. Plus, 21 x to the fifth, 2 squared, plus 35, then that would be x to the fourth, 2 cubed, plus 35 again, x to the third, 2 to the, boy, what am I doing? Yeah, 2 to the fourth, sorry. <laughs> At first I was like, oh, that didn't add to 7, but it does. That's what I was doing in my head was trying to add these. 3 plus 4 is 7. Um, and then you do the last three terms.
do we agree with the last three terms there? Make sense how to do it? Okay, so now we gotta clean it up. And by the way, when you're supposed to be showing your work, that means I want to see this part that you actually substituted it in and then I can see what's happening there. So then this is x to the seventh, that's all that is, plus, then I have seven times two, which is 14, x to the sixth, plus, two squared is four times 21 is 84, x to the fifth, plus, two cubed is eight, eight times 35, so eight times 30 is 240, eight times five is 40, so that's gonna be 280, and that'll be x to the fourth. Then the only difference in the numbers between these two is that I have to multiply by two again, so that'll make that 560 x cubed, plus then two to the fifth times 21, that's 672 times x squared, then two to the sixth times seven, I'll just go ahead and tell you, is 448 times x plus two to the seventh, which is 128. So when you look at this one, you don't just see, like the number, Pascal's triangle doesn't jump out at you from this one like it did from the other one because we had other numbers in there. Okay, what questions do you have? Anything at all? Okay, Trin, you got a question? You sure? Okay, so let's look at number three because it's a little bit different too. This has subtraction in it, so we want to think of this as addition because it's a plus b is our goal. So this is really plus a negative. So for this term, I have to use the negative 3d. N is five, so I need row five, and row five would be one, five, ten, ten, five, one. Okay, so start off, my first coefficient is one. I take this first term, which is four C to the fifth power Second term is negative 3d to the zero power. Right. My next term is five, I'm sorry, my next coefficient is five, times four c to the fourth power, negative 3d to the first power, plus 10 times four c to the third power, times negative 3d to the second power. Then you go ahead and write the last three terms out. So do you agree with that expansion there? Once you get that done, go ahead and get a calculator ready because I didn't tell you to do that. We're gonna, I'm gonna give you some of, the, some of the next part, but then I'm gonna let you calculate some of it as well. And I didn't say that at the beginning, sorry. So when we go to simplify this, since this is to the zero power, this is one, and then this is one. So I really just have four C to the fifth power. So I need to take four to the fifth power, which is gonna be 1024 times C to the fifth. Then here, since I'm gonna take negative three D to the first power, this is gonna stay negative. When it multiplies by all that, it's still gonna be negative. So this is gonna be minus, so I'm gonna have to take four to the fourth, 
then multiply it by 5 and a negative 3, and that'll give you negative 3840 c to the fourth times d. Then this negative 3 is going to be squared, so it's going to be positive. Multiply by all that stays positive. So then 9 times 10 is 90 times 4 to the third gives me 5760 c cubed d squared. And then you get the actual values for the last three. And remember that the total number of terms is n plus 1. So since n was 5, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 terms. That way you can make sure you didn't miss, you know, I didn't leave a term off or do anything weird like that. Okay. Any questions at all? We good? Pretty simple. Remember, you, gotta sh you have to turn your work in as well. So this is the work that I want to see. And then you have your answer. I didn't give you a ton of these because, and I tried not to make them too long because when you, when you type them in, I know that gets tedious, but it, I tried not to make it too mean anyway. Yeah, so in Delta Math, you'd have to type this whole thing, but I didn't give you any that had like 12 terms or anything, or like I tried to, I took out the ones that were a little wacky. So therefore, you have very few to do, so you miss one, it makes it, you know, it counts more against you, but they're not going to be difficult, so just be careful when you're typing them in. Any questions at all? We good? Awesome.